Hello, hello, hello. This is Minister Willie Ray Anderson Jr. On tonight, by at the 12 midnight or by 12.05 a.m. on tonight. And I'm bringing you the word on tonight. Bring you the word on this midnight hour. Bring the word on tonight, this midnight hour. Minister Willie Ray Anderson Jr., my first sermon for this year of 2022. Minister Willie Ray Anderson Jr. on tonight. And I bring you the word. From the Holy Bible, King James Version, please. King James Version, please, out of the book of Jeremiah in the Old Testament, starting at chapter 1 and starting at verse, verse 4. Jeremiah chapter 1, starting at verse 4 out of the Holy Bible, and it says, then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, talking about in the belly of a woman or the belly of the mother, the child is formed in the belly of the mother. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, God said. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, I chose thee. I set thee apart, Inside your mother's belly, God is saying to the prophet Jeremiah and to all those God have chosen to be his prophets, to be his prophets, to be his children, to be those that's ordained by God from the belly of the womb, from the from the belly, from the from their mother's womb, God is saying to this, to this prophet right here, to all of God's children that he have chosen, those he's even chosen from the foundations of the world, the Bible says also. And it said, then the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed thee, I mean, before you start growing in your mother's womb, before you start becoming what the, what the world called a fetus, these doctors, these modern days, called a fetus, before you became what they call in these modern days and time, a fetus. And this is God talking. God made us all. God created us all. God know what he talking about more than the doctors. God made us, the doctors didn't make us. God made everybody and everything. And God know more than the doctors would ever know all over this planet. He know more than they would ever know. I mean, come on now. And nobody's God but God. And God said, before I formed thee, before you became what these modern day doctors call a fetus, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, out of the woman's, you know, out of her womb, you know, and I sanctified thee. He said, for you came forth out of the womb. I sanctified thee. I chose thee. I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. I ordained thee a prophet to the whole world, to all the nations of the world, to all the countries of the world. God is saying, I've already ordained thee to be a prophet, to be a preacher, to be a child of God, to be a witness of him to be a witness of the Almighty. I've chosen thee to be my prophet, to be my preacher, to be my child of God. God is saying, when you become born again of the water and of the Spirit, God said, I have chosen thee to be a true Christian, to be a child of God, to be a, a disciple of Christ. From the belly, I I knew thee, God said, before you start forming into what they call the fetus. Come on, y'all. This is what God said. This is the word of God. Giving you the word on tonight. Giving you the word on tonight. And it said, before I formed thee, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee. I chose thee. A prophet to be a prophet unto the nations. God said, believe his prophets and you will prosper. Don't believe them and you won't prosper. And, and a lot of people, the true prophets of God, People don't believe them. You know, they believe these other prophets, all kind of prophets. Come on, prophesy for your money. Prophesy for your praise, for you to praise them. Prophesy for you to like them. Prophesy for you to love them. The Bible said the hypocrites in the Bible, they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? And God said, but the true prophets, a lot of people don't believe them. For some reason, people... Don't believe the true prophets of God. It's hard for people, even in the Bible days. It's hard for people to believe the true prophets. 
the prophets God has truly chosen to be prophet for some reason. It's hard for people to believe God's true prophets for some reason. Even though their prophecies will come to pass, I don't care what they say, people don't believe the true prophets and, and then until their prophecies come to pass. And when they prophecy come to pass, then they believe. And a lot of times, it's too late for a lot of people because very few people believe the true prophets of God. Very few people uh, believe God's prophets is truly chosen by him and not the false prophets. And a lot of people, it's easy for them to believe the false prophets. They believe the false prophets real easy. Come on. Prophesy for their money. Prophesy to be liked. They prophesy for people to like them and love them and give them money. Come on, y'all. <laughs> it's easy for people to believe the, the, the prophecies from the false prophets. You know, they false prophets I'm talking about. And you know what? That's that, that is so much truth in the word of God. And, and the word of God say he's for our example. The Old Testament. What happened to God's people in the Old Testament is for our example. And just looking at the history of people's lives, even in the modern day and time, and here in America, and even all over this planet, all over this world, things that have happened in the past, it also can be for our examples. What happened to others, good or bad, can be for our example for us to learn what legacy other people left behind. What uh, happened to them can be an example to us to learn from what happened to other people, whether it's good or bad, whether they died or prospered or they was killed or tragedy or success. I'm talking about in the right way. And since even some people who have died the wrong way or some people who have got success the wrong way, we can look at them and look at that. What happened to people like that for our examples. And the Bible said, even the children of Israel, the bad things they've done that caused God to be angry at them is for our example. The Bible said that. Even in the New Testament through Apostle Paul, he mentioned about the uh, uh, children of Israel in the Old Testament, what they done that was wrong, that made God angry, can be for our examples. Come on. Man falling through the cracks of the ground that, that uh, talked back to Moses, that talked back to the man of God uh, named Moses, called Moses. He talked back to... To Moses, he called Moses a lie. You know, a lot of the children of Israel did that. In other words, called him a lie. They didn't believe what Moses said. They didn't believe what the Lord told Moses. Come on. And God got angry at the children of Israel for not believing what Moses said. Because God told Moses to say what he said to the children of Israel. And God said they is far with example. To Apostle Paul, the children of Israel in the Old Testament is far with example. And what did they do? A lot of them talk back to Moses, call Moses a liar. In other words, come on. They rebel, say, Moses, you ain't no man of God. Some of them said that, and some of them said, you lying. Come on, y'all. And some of them, and a man, his whole family rebelled against Moses. And the Bible said, the whole earth swallowed them up. I mean, the earth just opened up where they were standing and made a great big crack and let them fall into it. Come on, y'all. His whole family. This man that came against the man of God, Moses, the God let the whole earth under them, the ground under them, open up and swallowed up that whole family. See, God showed a whole lot of his anger, his anger, I'm talking about in the Old Testament toward the children of Israel that came against Moses. Come on, y'all. And a lot of them, they came against the prophets of God. And a lot of times, they didn't die that instant. You know, some of them didn't die that instant from God's anger. And then some, they, they laid on, beat what they sow laid on. Some of them took years later. The children of Israel reap laid on some of the other children of Israel and they came against God's prophets. God said, touch not my anointed and do my prophets no harm. You hear what I'm saying? That's the word of God. And he said, no liar would tear in his sight. He said that also in the book of Psalms. You hear me? God said, touch not my anointed. Y'all feel like y'all got the freedom to talk back to somebody because y'all don't believe that's a woman of God or Y'all don't believe that's a man of God or certain people y'all don't believe in just because you don't believe in them. You think you got the freedom and the right to abuse them with your words or actions or with your physical abuse or with your words. You think you got the right to cuss out us and, you know, cuss out God's children because you feel like ain't nothing going to be done to you because you don't believe in them. So you feel like God don't believe in them because you don't like you such a big deal or. Like you think you got the right to jump on somebody just because you don't believe in them. 
you think you got the right to abuse somebody because you don't believe in them. That's what you think. But the Bible said in the Old Testament, they are following an example. I'll tell you this again. And what did they do in the Old Testament? They, they, they lied on the prophets of God. They jumped on the prophets of God. They even killed the prophets of God. Some of the prophets of God, they killed all kind of ways. Even, even Jesus' apostles in the, in the New Testament. Uh, the, you know, you know Peter, different ones. Even Apostle Paul, when he got old, Nero got his head chopped off, killed him. He, was, he became a martyr. He died for Jesus. Men of God's children died for him in the New Testament also. Most so part, you know, they became children of God in the New Testament. Come on, y'all. They became uh, born again Christians in the New Testament. And many of them suffered under the persecution of Nero, uh, persecution of the Roman Empire back at that time with the different Caesars. Hello. And a lot of Jesus' disciples or the apostles who followed Jesus, the first ones who followed Jesus, they died under persecution. They died. Uh, martyrs death. They died for Jesus. They died for the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Many of them died different kind of deaths. You know, Peter crucified upside down and others was killed all kind of different ways. Apostle John, different one. They died. But Apostle John, he didn't really die. God kept him alive. You know, the youngest, he might have been the youngest apostle. I'm not sure, but most of the other apostles, they died, but they, they, they had the apostle John in the Isle of Patmos. And when he got the book of Revelation, God gave it to him. And the Isle of Patmos, they bought him in all. And God still let him live. But they bought him in all. And sent him to the Isle of Patmos. And God let him live. We don't know how long he lived. I'm not sure. The Bible didn't say for sure. But they, they put him through persecution. He might have died, died a natural death. We don't know for sure. But he might have did. The Bible didn't really say he died a a tragic death because God kept him alive and probably for the purpose to write the book of Revelation and on and on and to live as long as God would let them live for Christians at that time so they could have more faith, you know, encouragement from him to believe in Jesus more so and, they, and be encouraged to die for Jesus because he, he was an example, you know, to live and uh, be able to encourage the saints at that time. But in a way, the Bible said the Old Testament the people in the Old Testament, it followed an example. And what did they do to the prophets in the Old Testament? A lot of them didn't believe in them. They believed them false prophets and Jezebel's false prophets and on and on and on. A lot of times people got to have proof. They got to see what the natural eye. You know, this word is vanity. Like King Solomon said, vanity to vanity, all this vanity. People want to see, see, see. Corner mind, corner eyes. They got to see everything before they believe it. You know, a lot of people are not going to believe God's prophets until things come to pass that God said going to come to pass through the prophets. Come on, y'all. Even through Moses, way back in the Old Testament time. Come on, y'all. And they didn't like the prophets of God. They persecuted the prophets of God, even in the Old Testament. They talked down on them. They, they hated them. They hated them. They didn't like them. Come on, y'all. And they don't hardly like us now. True children of God, they don't like us now. True prophets of God, most of them don't like us now. And we don't do what they do. The Bible said they think it's strange that we run not with them. We don't go to them to these sports arenas and sport, you know, shows. And come on, y'all, the worldly music and worldly music concerts. And <laughs> they think it's strange we won't hang out on the corners with them. They think it's strange that we won't. Run with them buddy buddy with their beard and Dodgers Cowboys and whatever sports players and, and Mavericks and Star. They think it's strange when we don't run with them. They think it's strange that we don't drink no liquid jugs called beer and smoke cigarettes with them. They think it's strange, the Bible said. Because we keep to ourselves, the Bible said, come out from among them and be ye shepherds, said the Lord. They think it's strange because we obey the words of God. In that manner too. They think it's strange. This, this guy, he always by himself. He don't, he don't run with us black, white, or missing, or whatever color or race. They think it's strange. He don't do like they do. He's a man too. He he's this, he that. And he's always like this by himself. You know, all these think about it, being with his family, his wife, or, you know, in church, you know, you know, they think it's strange. So they stir and watch us. Everywhere we go, 
harass, agitate, aggravate, and persecute. Yeah, persecute, agitate. Everywhere we go and harass us, drive crazy around us on the highway, trying to make us angry, already trying to provoke us to anger. Come on. Because they think it's strange, the Bible said. Peter said, Apostle Peter. <laughs> they think it's strange that we come out from among them and be shepherd. They think it's strange that we run not with them buddy-buddy. That we not no buddy-buddy with them. They think it's strange. You know, they call us weird. Call us crazy. All kind of names. And they don't like us. Jesus said he revealed his secrets to his prophets. God will show us things he won't show nobody else. That's the Bible. He said he revealed his secrets to his prophets. And everybody not a prophet. But the Bible said he revealed his secrets to his prophets. God will show us things that other people don't see. God will let us see things in the future that other people don't see. And what is a prophet? A prophet is somebody that foretells the future. See, God will show us what's going to happen in the future when a lot of other people don't even know. God will let us see this world in a certain way that nobody else see it. You know, they, they still worldly mind and they still see the world that they've been seeing and when they're not born again, they don't see that this world going to come to an end. They don't see that they babies and they ch children growing up in a messed up world. And they probably don't understand me when I say poor babies in a world like this. <laughs> they probably don't understand why this man saying poor children growing up in a world like this because they, they mind is all set on this world and they think this world going to be here forever. But this world and this country, America, is not going to be here forever. America is going to come to an end one day. This whole world is going to come to an end one day. Y'all babies and everybody else in it is not going to be here forever. We all not going to be here forever. This world is coming to an end. And all the babies in the world are not going to save this world. All y'all grandbabies and all kind of babies is not going to save this world. Jesus said this world it's coming to an end. And when Jesus said this world's coming to an end, it's going to come to an end. No matter how many babies y'all have, no matter how many prayers y'all pray, the Bible said, God said, he said his word above his name. He said he magnified his word. Talking about the Holy Bible, his word of God above his name. And you know God's name is powerful. The name of Jesus is all powerful name. But he said he put his word the word of God I just read to you. The word of God all throughout the Bible. The whole Bible is the word of God. And God said he put the Holy Bible, his word above his name. And everybody going to bow to the name of Jesus one day. The devil and all the demons and all the angels and everybody else that's been born in this world is going to bow to the name of Jesus. And they're going to call him Lord Everybody gonna buy all the demon spirits, the devil, Satan, everybody, Satan worshipers, witches and warlocks, everybody. One day is gonna bow to the name of Jesus and call him Lord. They gonna say this right now. What I'm getting ready to say, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ is Lord. On our knees, we all gonna say it. Everybody, every spirit, every ghost, whatever. <laughs> is going to bow and say, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is Lord. I'm saying it now. Well, I'm going to say it again with everybody else one day. Everybody else going to say it too. They don't even like Jesus. Don't like God. You don't want to live for God, but you're going to bow one day. You're going to say, Jesus Christ is Lord one day. You know, you might not like the Bible now. You don't like Jesus now. A lot of y'all, you don't want the Lord in your life. You don't want to receive Jesus for your personal Lord and Savior. You want to persecute us and cuss and everything else. You want to do drink your beer and whiskey and fermented wine. Take your dope, smoke your cigarettes, cigars and pipes. Fornicate, homosexual, lesbian, tranny. Whatever you are, demon possessed, or Satan worshipers. Oh yeah, everybody, y'all going to bow one day and say Jesus is Lord, the Son of God is Lord. Okay, go back to the scripture, uh, the book of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, this is God talking. He said, I sanctify thee and I ordain thee a prophet to the nations. I ordain thee a prophet to all the countries of the world, man. I ordain thee, I chose thee to prophesy to all the world, even if they don't believe you. 
Even if they don't believe you, Prophet Jeremiah, and all children of God who God called to be prophets. And women can be prophetess. They can be prophetess. But not no trying to be no man, man preaching, not trying to be preaching like a man. But women can be prophetess and prophesy what's going to happen in their future. And what prophetess do that are women, and that's what men do those of us that are prophets. We prophesy what's going to happen in the future to a certain country like America, to all the world, or to certain individuals personalized, plain and simple. That's what they've done in the Bible. They prophets prophesied what's going to happen to a whole nation. And they prophesied what's going to happen to the world. And they prophesied what's going to happen to a certain person individually. And what does prophets do? You hear me? And when God give us something that's going to be prophecy, it's going to come to pass to prove that we are sent by God to prophesy. And not these lying prophets that y'all believe in so easily. So easily people believe lies. People believe lies more easily than they do the truth. That's the truth. People said that. <coughs> people said that and that's the truth. People will believe a lie quicker than they will the truth. And that's the truth. And look all throughout the Bible. They believe these lying prophets, man, they do the true prophets. <laughs> it ain't funny, but they do. Folks will believe a lie quicker than the truth right now. And God said, I will turn you over. I will turn them over to believe a lie. Come on, who is against the truth that don't love the truth. And most people don't love the truth here in America. And all over the world, people don't love the truth. You hear me? They love lies. They like lies. Come on, they like lying people. They got lying people for buddies and friends. <laughs> they'll come on Instagram. They'll come on Facebook line. Playing like they somebody they not. Wearing some other person's name on Facebook or Instagram and everything else and think they fooling somebody. <laughs> but nobody fooled God. I and mean, you may fool God's people for a little while and God will show you up later. You hear me? And God going to show up all the false prophets one day. God going to show up all the false pastors one day. God going to show up all the hypocrite church members one day. You hear me? All the people y'all believe in and y'all think going to heaven might not be there. Like old East Texas preachers preached about a long time ago. <laughs> he said a lot of people y'all think going to hell might not be there. And a lot of people y'all think going to heaven might not be there. That's what old East Texas preacher preached about a long time ago. <laughs> you hear me? Now y'all, y'all not God. I don't know why people want to play God. I mean, they go to these funerals and they want to preach folks into heaven that they like. I'm talking about who they like now. <laughs> they want to act like they such a perfect person when they were living, and I know they lying. I've been to some of these funerals throughout my lifetime. I got here and people get up there and say folks ain't never cussed and <laughs> people ain't never told lies. I know they lying. They can say some of the most sweetest things about people at their funeral. You hear me? I've heard people say some of the most sweetest things about people at their funerals and at their wakes, you know, after they done die because they like somebody. You know, I'm talking about who they like now. And then, then what you think they're going to say when they don't like you? <laughs> now, a lot of enemies have gone to some people's funeral who was their enemy. A lot of folks will come to your funeral, any of our funerals or whatever, and they can be our enemies and come to our funeral. You hear me? And they'll sit up there like they care. They don't care about us. If you don't care about somebody when they're living, why in the world are you going to care about them when they die? If you don't love somebody while they live, why are you going to play like you care about them when they done die? And then the folks are so pretentious and people are so fake. And like I've always said, people are great actors. They are great actors. I mean, some of them need to be in the movies. It ain't funny, but a lot of people are great actors. They are great pretenders or great actors all over the world. You hear me? Folks love to pretend. They know how to pretend. People know how to have two faces and they'll smile in your face and, and their heart is fully even, hate you in their hearts. You hear me? But they'll smile in your face, kiss you in the mouth, hug you, shake your hand, and some of them be mad at you. And don't even really love you. You hear me? How many people that got married don't really love each other? Will you please tell me? <laughs> that don't mean nothing. Folks look at things and they think something means something. Don't y'all realize that people can do a whole lot of things with no love in their heart? And you might say, where you get that from, preacher or prophet? I can tell you what the, uh, what the Bible said. First Corinthians chapter 13. Will you please read it? 
Will you please read in the Bible yourself? Will you read it, please? You worry about somebody else reading the Bible? Will you please read the Bible for yourself, please, and stop being deceived? Read the Bible and stop being deceived, please. First and winter chapter 13 let you know that folk can do a whole lot of sacrifice and things and people can do a whole lot of things and, mm -hmm. and don't really love you. They can do a whole lot of things and don't care nothing about you and they'll marry you, have sex with you, kiss you in the mouth, hug you and everything. And all kind of participation in social service or whatever <laughs> in the church house, job, everywhere, and don't love you at all. Read the book. Read the Bible. Read the book of, of First of Corinthians chapter 13 in the New Testament. Will you please read it? He said, Though I give my body to be burnt and have not charity. That's talking about love. It profit me nothing. That means you can give your body to be burnt trying to prove to somebody you're a good person. You try to make everybody think you're a good person toward a certain race of people. Try everybody think you're a good person toward certain people in a community or city or wherever, church, wherever, job, wherever, and think you such a good person. Maybe try to make everybody think you so, you so good. But see, God know the heart. The Bible said the heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Only God knows the heart. You can't fool God. You fool people all your life. Put on a masquerade all your life. <laughs> you can pretend in the church, pretend on the job, pretend in your community, pretend in your neighborhood, Pretend anywhere on your in anywhere where that you may live, anywhere you may work, any kind of business, whatever. But God know your heart as well as He know man and everybody else. You cannot fool Jesus. You cannot fool God. God knows the heart. You hear me? Nobody fool God. He know everybody's heart, and nobody's God but God. That's why God said you can't judge. Why are you judging? Jesus said in Matthew chapter seven. Judge not, lest you be judged. Because you can't judge nobody. You ain't you ain't God. Why are you gonna judge? Why you think you got the right to judge and on your way to hell on top of that? And you won't even get saved. You won't receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. You won't ask Jesus to come into your heart and life on top of that. Come on. Now you still doing your wickedness, dragging and smoking, drinking beer and smoking and fornicating and you a lesbian or fornicating you a homosexual and and you go to your nightclub, whatever else, you dancing for the devil, you singing your rhythm and blues and hip hop for the devil, you singing your blues and country music or whatever, rock and roll music, whatever music for your culture, and you trying to judge. And you go, you ain't perfect. Jesus said, judge not. That's what Jesus said. I don't care what somebody else said in this modern day time, always trying to bring up something new. Ain't nothing new when it comes to the Bible. God's word remains the same. Ain't nothing new. The Bible been around hundreds of years, thousands of years. Ain't nothing new about the Bible. The Bible is still the same. Ain't no new way to win young people either. The Bible's still the same. The same gospel that won young people a long time ago as the same gospel that's going to win young people today that truly want to be saved. I'm talking about those who truly want to be saved and not playing with God like the older people that are. You hear me? Ain't no new gospel. This is the same gospel since Apostle Paul. <laughs> Ain't no new gospel. Ain't no new way to win young people. Ain't no new way. You get all whirling and stuff and dancing like the devil in God's house. There ain't no new way. Ain't no new way to win young people. No. Same gospel that won young people back in the Apostle Paul damn time. Is it going to take that same gospel to win young people now? Ain't no new gospel. You hear me? Same gospel, bub. No new gospel to win young people. Plain and simple. The Bible said, be ye holy if I'm holy. That's what God said. You hear me? And if, it, and if anybody preaching another gospel, Apostle Paul said, if you hear anybody preaching another gospel, let them be a curse. What? Let them be a curse. You hear me? Because that's a false preacher and a false prophet that preached any other gospel other than the gospels in, in the Bible. You hear me? That I'm preaching. Woohoo! Plain and simple. God have not changed. God have not changed, and God will not change for anybody and anything. The word of God remain the same, and the word of God will not change for anybody or for anything. You hear me? His word remain the same. He said his word will go out, and it will not return to him void. Do you hear me? And God not playing with us, and the devil not playing with us, and the Lord Jesus soon to come. You hear me? 
He going to come back in a minute and every new year to come along. Y'all think, oh, new year, new year. Every new year, this world have not changed. You hear me? Every new year that comes, people get worse and worse. Look around. Look around. Every new year just points to the closer to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, who is soon to come. Every new year points to the closer to the day you're going to die and all of us going to leave this world die or go in the rapture. Every new year to come alone don't make this world no new world. You hear, you hear me? It make it worse. It's getting worse and worse. Every new year come along. It don't make nothing new. It's all the same, more and more, and it's getting worse, more and more here in America every year. And every year go by, we all get older, and we all got to leave this world. You hear me? Young and old, ain't nobody staying here forever. This world coming to an end, you hear me? Because Jesus said so. The Son of God says so who made this world. The Lord Jesus Christ made this world, but God and the Holy Ghost. They know what they talking about. Jesus know what he talking about. They made this world. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost made this world. So Jesus know what he talking about. He said this world coming to an end. And it is. You hear me? He said this gospel of the kingdom. Talking about Jesus. Jesus said this. This gospel shall go out to all the world. And then shall the end come. The end going to come. You hear me? The end going to come. This world coming to an end. You hear me? The end is going to come. You better get ready because Jesus soon to come. Plus, you got to leave this world. Every new year to come is close to us leaving this world. You hear me? Plain and simple. Jesus soon to come. He said, I ordain thee, a prophet to the nation. A prophet to the nation. Then said I, ah, oh, Lord God. This is Prophet Jeremiah talking back to the Lord. Then said I, oh, Lord God, behold, I cannot speak for I'm a child. You hear me? I came to Jesus at a very young age. You hear me? I came to Jesus when I was still in high school. My mama said I was a little boy. <laughs> I guess I was still a little boy. I was still at home and in high school. I was 15 years old when I came to Jesus. I didn't hardly know the Bible at all until I got saved. And I got saved when I was in high school. I got into the Bible immediately. I started reading and studying the Bible. I got these different, you know, commentaries, dictionaries, and you hear me, Hebrew and Greek and all that, you know, Strong's Concordance. And I got into the Bible. I got so hungry for the Bible. I got so much desire to get into the Word of God. And that's what's going to happen. You truly get saved. You got a strong desire for God's Word. And that's what I had when I got saved when I was in high school. As a child, I had hunger for the Word of God. I didn't have to go to no seminary. I ain't had to go to no Bible college. Hello. I ain't had to go to that. I got on my knees. That was my college. <laughs> got on my knees and I studied the Bible and read the Bible for myself for years and years and years. And I learned the truth about a lot of things. A lot of time I find that as a child of God, you don't fit everywhere. You don't fit in a lot of these churches if they lie about anything. You don't fit in a lot of organizations and you don't fit in a lot of things when you're truly a child of God. And you choose a prophet. Most of the prophets in the Bible is by themselves. Read the Bible. John the Baptist, mostly by himself. You know, people came to be baptized, but he was mostly by himself. When he started preaching, <laughs> before he started preaching. Read the Bible, Elijah was by himself. Read the Bible, Prophet Jeremiah, I'm reading from his book in the Old Testament right now. He was by himself. He had one man to write for him named Baruch. Come on, he was mostly by himself. Most of God's true prophets was by themselves. They didn't have no lot of friends. And I know a lot of friends and buddies. You hear me? Woohoo! The true prophets are mostly alone. You hear me? Because God deal with us alone. And we see the world in a different way than other people see the world. You hear me? A lot of people don't see the world like the prophets of God do, like we do. They see the world in such a corner way. They want to hold on to the world. They want to see it like they've always seen it. But when God save us and God make us prophets, he make us born again prophets, we see the world in a whole different light. We see the world in a whole different light than everybody else. And that's why we mostly by ourselves. We don't participate with your sports and your sports arenas and a lot of things that a lot of these other so-called Christians particip participate with you. <laughs> Prophets of God, we are alone. God deal with us a lot of times. We are alone. Now, if y'all know about them old saints, they'll tell you this. But a lot of them old saints not around like they used to be. And they know what I'm talking about. The old saints that have been in the holy church so long and 
and they know the Bible and the Spirit of God is really on them and upon them and in them, they know exactly what I'm talking about right now. Most of the prophets, most of the time, we are by ourselves. We don't have no lot of friends, no lot of buddies. You know, We don't do a lot of things like other people do. We don't see the world like everybody else see the world. That's why we mostly by ourselves. And a lot of people don't understand us. The Bible said they hate us because we don't do what they do. And we preach against what they doing. They hated Jesus, the son of God, because he preached against what they doing. They didn't like Jesus because Jesus preached against what they doing. Jesus didn't like what they were doing because it was sin. Because it was sin. The Bible said all unrighteous to sin. Anything not right is a sin. And Jesus preached against the world at that time in the in the synagogue, he preached against what the religious people were doing and saying, and why the religious people didn't like him. Folks who knew the Bible and the Old Testament at that time, the, the Torah, they didn't like Jesus. They wanted Jesus dead. They wished Jesus dead. They wanted Jesus dead. They plotted Jesus' death. That's why they lied to Pilate and all of them to get Jesus killed. Come on. They got Jesus crucified. You hear me? Because they didn't like Jesus preached against them and their hypocrisy. And they supposed to be knowing the Bible and they... They teaching and reading from the Bible too. I'm talking about the Old Testament. At that time, they called the Torah. The Old Testament. And Jesus preached against those religious folks too. Like a lot of church folks don't like me. A lot of church folks religious and they know they lying about ties. A lot of them know they lying about ties. They lying for these women preachers. And, and they holding on to sports like worldly folks. And they holding on to worldly music. And all kind of sins they doing. That's why they don't like no man preacher like me. That's why they don't like no prophet like me. A lot of these prophets, we are not like the truth of chosen by God. They preach against the sins in the church house and in the world like Jesus did. They don't like us. You hear me? Jesus said they hated me and they're going to hate you too. That's what Jesus said. He said the world hates you because I've chosen you out of the world. And we Jesus telling us men and women of God. That's what Jesus telling us true children of God. They hate you because they hated me first, Jesus said. And because I've chosen you out of the world, like Jesus told the prophet Jeremiah right here where I've been reading. He told the prophet Jeremiah, I have chosen you and ordained you from your mama's womb, from your mama's body, from your mama's belly. So God knew we were going to get saved. Those that got saved, God knew we was going to prophesy to the world, to the nations, like I've been doing, like I'm doing now. The judgment's going to come. You hear me? And people don't like to hear nothing about God's judgment. They don't like to hear no preacher preach against their sin. They don't like to hear no preacher preaching judgment going to come on their city and on America and on the world. They don't want to hear that. They want to think it's going to be peace. See, the Bible said the false prophets always said there's going to be peace. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. The false prophets always prophesy peace. Now, now who's y'all favorite preacher these days? <laughs> Who y'all favorite preachers? The one always preaching peace. That's y'all favorite preachers, right? Right. That's y'all preachers y'all love so much in this day and time. They come on TV always preaching peace. They're in y'all churches every Sunday. Always preaching peace, peace, peace. And that's what they did in the Bible days, the false prophets. I said the false prophets. They always prophesied peace. Ain't nothing going to happen. God not going to send no judgment. God is a God of love all the time. But they always prophesying what y'all want to hear, what y'all like to hear. They always talking about God, love, 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 and peace, peace, peace. They did the same thing in the Bible days when they was false prophets. I say it when they was false prophets. Always preaching love. Always said, peace, peace, peace. Ain't nothing going to happen that's bad. Read the Bible. But those of us that were sent by God and that are sent by God now, that are prophets sent by God now, and they, and they that were prophesying in the Old Testament time, they didn't like them like they don't like us now. They hate us now. They want us dead now like they wanted them dead back then. And some of the prophets, they did kill. Some of the prophets, God did allow them to kill. And some of them, they didn't. God didn't let them kill. And some of them, they did. You hear me? It's all in God's hand. Woohoo! But they still won because they went to heaven. And all those who killed them and they didn't repent, they went to hell when they died. You hear me? Woohoo! So they still didn't be the win. Hello. Just more God's children died for him. That's all. 
Woohoo! You still ain't won nothing when you kill a child of God. Cause we go to a better place, bud, where you going to hell with your buddies and friends that's going with you. <laughs> it ain't funny. But you going to a place that's worse than this world would ever be. You hear me? And think you done done something cause you jump on God's children. Hit us and jump on us and cuss us out. Woohoo! And you think you done something. But you on your way to hell, bub. And woman, man, boy, girl, whatever you are, you on your way to hell. And you think you done something jumping on us. But you going to hell if you die. You better not die. <laughs> you better not die. You better not die. But how many of y'all dying, though? How many of y'all dying every day that don't have Jesus in your heart? Uh-huh. How many of y'all dying that haven't got saved and born again yet, if you ever will? How many of y'all dying in your sins every day, every week, every year, all year long? How many of y'all dying in y'all sins and don't have Jesus in your life? How many? And you think you done something cussing us out, jumping on us. I ain't the first one that you want to jump on, hit on, hit and knock, knock out, what you call knock out. But you better not die. You sure better not die. You're going to face the devil. You're going to hell. <laughs> You're going to face the fires of hell if you die. Woohoo! But you can kill us, children of God. We're going to a better place, but you ain't won nothing. You took us out of your world. To a better world, we going. <laughs> I'll be able to see my babies, bub, and I go there. I see my babies y'all can't have sex with. I see my babies y'all can't cuss out. I see my babies y'all can't jump on. I see my baby, y'all can't put on dope with you. I see my baby, y'all can't put in jail. I see my baby, y'all can't abuse. I see my baby, y'all can't fornicate with. You hear me? Y'all can't touch my baby with no fornication or nothing. Woohoo! My baby's already gone to glory through miscarriage. You hear me? And this scripture right here also let me know that too. Let me know that too where my baby's at. Cause my baby's being formed in the wounds. You hear me? The wounds of, of, of females that love, you know, got pregnant. My first wife and on. See, my Bible let me know that they was being formed by God and that they in glory right now. This scripture right now let me know that. They might have been what they call fetus. My babies may have been what they call fetus. But when they died in the womb of the woman, of the women that I got pregnant, they went on the glory, bud. My essence. They went on the glory, bud. You hear me? It's being it's wide with you. They go on the glory, bud, and none of y'all can fornicate with them. None of y'all can be no ungodly, unsafe friend with them. You hear me? Y'all can't touch my babies, because my baby's gone to glory. Y'all can't have no sex with my babies, because they was what y'all call the fetus when they died in the wombs, when my babies died through miscarriage, in the women, women, woman womb. You hear me? And y'all can't touch my babies. They going to glory waiting on me. Waiting on Daddy Willie. Waiting on Papa Willie. Sometimes I tell Jesus, Jesus, tell my babies I say hello. And they going to see Papa Willie one day. You hear me? Because y'all can't touch them down here. You hear me? Y'all can't get them into trouble with you. You hear me? Can't no third or racist have sex with my babies. You hear me? Whatever race you are. You hear me? My babies going to glory. I'm so glad about it. I ain't got to worry about my babies. A lot of y'all got to worry about y'all children down there. I don't have to worry about none of my babies. Cause they already going to heaven, bud. And my baby's not going to hell with y'all. You hear me? Those of you that's going there. You hear me? Woo! And this scripture right here let me know where my babies at too. Cause they became what they might call the fetus. God said, when you were being formed in the womb, before you were formed, my baby was already being formed. That's why they died through miscarriage. They was already being formed. So they died through miscarriage and God already knew my babies and my baby's going to heaven right now. Just like God told the prophet Jeremiah right here in the book I'm reading right now, the book of Jeremiah chapter one. He said, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee, I chose thee a prophet unto the nations, to the world. Then said I, ah, oh, Lord God, before I, before, I behold, I cannot speak, I am a child. Never knew God would call me to preach, but I had it in my mind just in case one day, and he did. God finally called me to preach. You hear me? In, in verse 7, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child. I came to Jesus as I was. Whatever wound he said, but I found him a resting place. He made me glad when I was in high school. You hear me? 
I am a child for thou shalt go to, to all that I shall send thee whatsoever I command thee. Thou shalt speak and what is God's commandment but the word of God itself. The word of God, the Holy Bible is God's commandment. You hear me? Sometimes God speak directly and sometimes God speak indirectly through the word of God. You hear me? Woohoo! Word of God. You hear me? You read it for yourself. This Bible will tell you God speak it to you right here. When you read the Bible, that's God speaking. Understand? <laughs> Plain and simple. He said, but I, but the Lord said unto me, say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Lord. Don't be afraid of people. You hear me? The Bible said, perfect little cats out here. You hear me? You ain't scared of nobody. You're a child of God. God said, the righteous are bold as a lion. We ain't scared of you. We're not scared of you. Just because you can cuss. You can cuss and smoke. We ain't scared of you smoking your life away, killing yourself like Judas with them cigarettes, cigars, and pipes. You're killing yourself. You ain't hurting me. You ain't hurting none of God's children. Smoking and pooping on your cigarettes and, and cussing. You ain't scared me. You ain't scared none of God. You're going to be bold as a lion, bub. We bold as a lion, the Bible said. You hear me? We ain't scared of you. Because you can cuss and smoke. Understand? Okay. Uh, right here, the verse 9, it said, Then the Lord put forth his hand. You hear me? The Lord put forth his hand. And he touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. God said, Go, and I'll give you what to say. You speak my word, God said, I'll give you what that's hey, You hear me? And, and he that speak my word, God said, let him speak my word faithfully. I mean, you keep on speaking about my word. I call you to preach. God said, you keep on preaching. Don't worry about no preaching license on paper. That's man-made preaching license on paper. Man-made organization and all that preaching license on paper, that's man-made. Ain't nowhere in the Bible it said... Jesus had preaching license on paper. Ain't nowhere in the Bible said the prophets of God, when they the prophet Jeremiah, had preaching license on paper. When God tell you to do something, you don't have to have no man-made on paper preaching license on paper. No, you don't. God will call you to preach. You don't need no man-made preaching license on paper. That bootleg gospel, that bootleg, that's a lie. Ain't no such thing as bootleg in the gospel. <laughs> Ain't no such thing. That's man-made lie. That's a man-made lie. Talking about bootleg in the gospel, that's a man-made lie. Woohoo! Everybody need to know that. You hear me? God wants you to know the truth. He said the truth will make you free. Hello. He said, the Lord said to me, behold, I'll put my word in your mouth. I'll give you what to say. Open your mouth and I'll feel it. And he said, open your mouth and I'll give you what to say. Read the Bible. He said, the Holy Ghost will give you what to say. The Holy Ghost will give us what to say. You hear me? Verse 10. See, I have this day set thee over the nations, over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. What do that mean? A prophet do all that? And people think the president is the highest office. People think the president of the United States is the highest office. They think the kings and queens in other countries, <laughs> they think that's the highest office. That's not the highest office. I just read to you what God told the prophet. The highest office is being a true child of God preaching God's word, prophesying God's word. That's the highest office come from God Almighty, who is the highest of the highest. <laughs> when he ordain you and choose you to preach his word and to prophesy his word, that's the highest office over the president. You hear me? In God's eyesight, and God is number one. God is God. He's higher than anybody. He's higher than everything. So when God called us to do something like this, Preach and prophesy, that's the highest office even over the president. Woohoo! I'm talking about spiritual in God's eyesight. Oh, yes, it is. Now, we can't be over this country. That's that's man-made thing right here, you know? Oh, no, no, no. But we still got the highest office in God's eyesight. You hear me? When it comes to spiritual things and preaching the gospel. Woohoo! A lot of people don't know that. Read the Bible. People be surprised when you can learn you read and study the Bible for yourself. You be very surprised what you don't know. There's a lot of things people don't know because they don't read and study the Bible. All you got to do is read and study the Bible. All these Bibles all over this country. That's all you got to do. Get into the Bible. The Bible said, my people are destroyed. 
for lack of knowledge. People need more knowledge of God's word so you'll know these things. So you'll know these things and also perhaps give your life to Jesus. When you get into the Bible and read the Bible and study the Bible, you'll realize how much you need Jesus. We all need Jesus. Everybody needs Jesus. That's why we come to him, those of us that come to him. You hear me? Woohoo! God said, I chose you to tear down, build up. I just read it to you. So we can prophesy destruction on this country or any country. We can prophesy destruction. Just read it to you. God give us prophets. He will tell us the prophesy destruction is going to come. It's going to come. God prophesied the building's going to come down and tell us to prophesy it too. It's going to come to pass. You hear me? When God tells a prophesied judgment coming on America or coming on this world, it's going to come. It's going to come. You hear me? The word of God said it. I just read it to you. We can prophesy. You say we can build up. We can tear down. I just read it to you. My God said this to the prophet. Those of us are called by him to prophesy. He said, see, I'm going to read it again. Verse 10. So you see, I'm not lying. This word of God, God can't lie. God says, see, I have this day set thee over the nations. So God really put us over the president, over everybody in a certain sense, in a, in a spiritual sense, I'm talking about. In a spiritual sense. And God said, and over the kingdoms, over all the world, you hear me? All the kingdoms of the world, to root out. I'm just reading it to you, this word, to the prophets. He said, to root out and to pull down. We can prophesy destruction. On this world. We can prophesy judgment coming on America. We can prophesy judgment coming on a certain city or town or state. We sure can. I'm just now reading it to you. I'm reading it to you right now. God said, he said, you can root out and you can put it down and to destroy. To put it in our mouth. God said it right here. He put it in the prophet's mouth. To, to prophesy destruction. You hear me? To destroy. Destruction, y'all. That's what that means. And to throw down and to be in the plan. We need to prophesy prosperity or we can prophesy destruction. We ain't got to be paid to do it either. No money to be paid to do it at all. No, no money to be paid. The gospel is free. God said the gospel is free. His word of God is free. You hear me? Woohoo! True prophets don't prophesy for no money. True prophet, we prophesy freely what God give us to prophesy. You hear me? And we don't get paid for it neither. You hear me? We truly talk, call by God. And most of the time when you read the Bible, the Old Testament and the New Testament, when prophets prophesied, judgment came on a certain city. Judgment came on a certain country. Or judgment came on a certain individual person. Read the Bible. I don't care if it's the king. Prophets are prophesied against kings and it came to pass. Read the Bible. Prophets are prophesied to, to kings like the president. You know, anybody. Prophecies have come to pass through the mouth of God's prophets. On kings, queens, Jezebel, and King Ahab. And read the Bible. Other kings of, of Israel and Judah. And other kings of other countries. Syria. Heathen nations. Kings of heathen nations. Prophecy came to pass on them. You hear me? When God get a prophet to prophesy something, it could be destruction or whatever. It's going to come to pass. Don't you hear me? It could even be prophesying good. Like God prophesied to Naaman, who was a, a, a leader of the Syrian army. And he had leprosy all over his body. And he needed to be healed. And the prophet Elijah told him to go dip in the river Jordan seven times. And he would be healed. And he did that. He finally did it. He was mad. But he did it. And the Bible said he was healed from leprosy. So the prophet can prophesy good or bad. God said it right here in the word. Yes, he did. So God can give us a prophesy good or bad on people, on countries and nations and cities. You hear me? Woohoo! I just read it to you. The Bible said God is a God that cannot lie. You hear me? Woohoo! So God said this. And God said, before you was formed in the womb, I knew thee. So they let everybody know that God don't like abortion. Abortion is a sin. Y'all killing human beings in the womb of these girls and women. Y'all killing humans. Y'all killing and murdering babies. Y'all killing humans. Y'all killing persons in the wombs of girls 
and women when y'all perform abortion. And that's a sin in the eyesight of God. And God going to judge that sin. You hear me? God going to judge America for that sin. You hear me? Homosexual marriages. Lesbian marriages. And killing babies by the thousand. Year by year. I think it's going on up to the millions now. So many years have gone by of thousands of babies being killed every year in America through abortion. Through abortion. And that's murder. And God going to judge these leaders who support that. And those of y'all who support these leaders who support that, God will get you for that if you don't repent and get saved. God going to get you for it. You hear me? Now, that's my promise and that's God's promise at first. He going to get you for murder if you don't repent and receive Jesus for your present Lord and Savior. God going to judge you and God going to judge this country for supporting that trash, supporting that murdering, killing babies in the wounds and bodies of girls and women. God going to judge this country. This is that God judge Sodom and Gomorrah. God going to judge this country about that abortion and these homosexual marriages and these lives of marriage. You hear me? Woo, this country going down. And all y'all who support that trash and don't repent and don't receive Jesus Christ for your person, Lord, and save you going down with it and you going to hell with it. This Bible told me that all nations should be turned into hell that forget God. And that's what America's doing every day, forgetting God every year, every new year, every day, every year. America's forgetting God a whole lot of ways. America's forgetting God through this homosexual marriage and this and marriages and abortion and a whole lot of other sins. You hear me? America's being turned into hell. And the Bible said this nation's being turned into hell. You hear me? All the nations that forget God is being turned into hell. You hear me? That's the word of God. Woohoo! So America's coming down. Do good works. Bible said all your good works like filthy rags. You don't know him. When you're not born again, your good works like filthy rags, America. And everybody else is not saved. All the good works you do is like filthy rags. When you're not saved, you're still going to hell doing your good works and people talking good about you as your friend or whoever friend are talking good about them because they like them, you know. When you don't like somebody, you want to say they went to hell. <laughs> but I'm so glad y'all don't have the first and last say. Only God Almighty got the first and last say over everybody. You hear me? Woohoo! You can't put nobody in heaven or hell in these funerals. You hear me? Only God got that judgment, bub. And why y'all not holy enough to judge me? You not perfect enough to judge me? Y'all not perfect enough to judge nobody because you're not perfect yourself. Y'all not perfect enough to judge me and nobody else because you're not God and you're not holy enough. You're not holy enough to judge anybody. That's why Jesus said, judge not, lest you be judged. You hear me? So you better get yourself right. The Bible said, judge yourself. Read the Bible in Corinthians. In Corinthians, the Bible said, judge yourself so you won't be condemned with the world. That means so you won't die and go to hell with the world. That's what that mean. You hear me? So God wants you to judge yourself, us to judge ourselves, and then know that we need Jesus and be born again, receive Jesus Christ for our present Lord and Savior. That's how we judge ourselves in a good way. You hear me? Because <laughs> the Lord Jesus is soon to come. Plus, you got to die. I don't care what race, what color, what age you are. You got to die. One day, one soon, one day soon, one night, one morning, one evening. You got to die. Because the Bible says, the point unto men wants to die. And not the death to judge me. But the different is when a child of God die, we go to heaven to be with Jesus. And I receive Jesus for my present Lord and Savior right now forever with all my faults and failures. I get on my knees and I take it to Jesus. What do you do with your faults and failures? Send a man, send a mama, send a boy, send a girl that's trying to judge the preacher. And trying to judge me. What you doing with your fault? Do you get saved? Did you get on your knees and ask Jesus in your life while you trying to judge God's children? Are you saved while you cussing and smoking, drinking your beer and whiskey and fermenting and wine? While you trying to judge us, you doing all those kind of scenes and fornicating and everything else. And you trying to judge the preacher. What are you doing when you sin? Do you go to Jesus and ask Jesus to forgive you and come into your heart every time you sin? <laughs> us as children of God, we do. Do you do that? That's the difference, bud. Because when we die, we're going to heaven because of Jesus. Because of what Jesus done, we're going to heaven. With our faults and all and failures, we take it to Jesus to cleanse us from our sins. Bible said if we confess our sins, God faith and justice forgive us our sins. What about your sins? 
Sin a man, sin a mama, sin a boy, sin a girl. What about your sin while you trying to judge the preacher? What about your sins? What do you do with your sins? Because if you die in your sins while you trying to judge us, you're going to hell. And we're going to heaven. That's the difference, bud. Because <laughs> we will see Christ in our life. We ask God to forgive us and cleanse us and fill us with the Holy Ghost. Do you do that, sin a man, sin a woman, sin a boy, sin a girl, while you trying to judge the prophet, while you trying to judge God's children, while you trying to judge the preacher? Do you get saved? Do you repent of your sin? That's the question. The Bible said, if you confess with your mind the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. That's the only way you're going to be saved like we got saved like that. Are you saved like that while you judging? That's why the Bible said, judge yourself. So you won't be condemned with the world. So you won't go to hell with the world. Plain and simple. And God going to judge America for killing these babies in the wounds through this abortion and homosexual Sodom and Gomorrah marriage. Because we living in Sodom and Gomorrah. Right here in America every day, we living in it. God said, you shall confess to thy mind the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised from the dead, you shall be saved. Are you saved? Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Repent. The Lord Jesus soon to come. Bye.